Welcome to Ferro's Technology. Today we want to talk about a new and exciting function in Microsoft Excel called XLOOKUP. If you're familiar with data management and working with, let's say, finance people or any other places where you analyze data in Excel, VLOOKUP is no stranger to you whatsoever. A lot of times you might even use HLOOKUP depending on, on your need. The V stood for vertical and the H stood for horizontal. Now, in order to share with you what XLOOKUP can do, I'm going to quickly review what VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP look like first and see how XLOOKUP can ultimately save you a ton of time as you do analysis with XLOOKUP instead of the other older versions. So let's get started. VLOOKUP in its simplest form looks like this. The first reference is your lookup cell. You point it to the cell that you want to look up. This could be a drop down list. It could be a value that you type in. That's the value you're trying to look up in your table. Now, where you want to look up is next. It's an array of the information that contains the value to look up and the return answer. So a lot of times it'll be several columns and several rows. Now the column number then is the column to the right of your, in your array. So the far left column has to be what you're looking up the, and the column that you want the data to be found in is in one of those columns that are numbered from left to right. So then the next thing you have is whether you want to return an approximate value or an exact match. So VLOOKUP has these basic restrictions the column that has to be on the left for what your lookup value is looking for. So if my lookup value is a year, let's say 1916, then that 1916 has to be in that far left column. The next thing is that you have to choose the column that to look it up in from left to right. Now, the columns from left to right, you can say, I want April or I want May or June, but you could, you ha are restricted to just that one column. Now, let's look at HLOOKUP. HLOOKUP is very similar. You have a lookup value that you point to in a cell. You have a table array that has both the lookup value that's in that cell and the value that you want to return in another row down. The only difference between the two literally is whether you're looking at columns or you're looking at rows. It has the same restrictions. The lookup row has to be in the top. Your table array then is uh, numbered from that top row on down. Now, but what if you want to look up, let's say column G7 and you want to identify it as June 1918 data? That's a challenge. With VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP mashed together, trying to determine what column, what row you're in and get it to actually work, that becomes pretty difficult actually. So let's look and see how HLOOKUP can help. Now, part of the challenge with HLOOKUP is you have to have a license for Excel 2021 for PC or Mac or my, a Microsoft Office 365 subscription for PC or Mac or use Excel online. If you do, you have the ability to get into HLOOKUP. Now, I've emphasized the many restrictions that VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP have. Some of the most annoying ones have really been resolved by XLOOKUP. So let's go take a look. Now, in its simplest form, XLOOKUP has the lookup value, the cell reference that you want to look it up, the array reference that contains the lookup value only, now what this does is it allows you to identify just the column or the row that has the lookup data in it. The array reference then contains the return value. And then the next parameter also identifies what value you want to return to the user if it's not found. Instead of just pound NA, you get to return to them something in English like value not found or whatever English error message you'd like to return to the user. Now the next thing is an expanded version of the match type. Zero gives you an exact match just like in VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. 
the negative one gives an exact match, but if it's not found, it returns the next smaller item than what was looked for. The one returns an exact match, but if it's not found, it returns the next larger item. And then you can also return a wildcard match. So you can determine by wildcard what values you're looking for, if it's a partial value or not. Now, if you don't put the value in there, it'll just return an exact match. Then it'll look to the previous parameter to return what to present if not found. The next thing is that what type of search mode you want to use. You could perform a search starting at the first item. That's the default. If you don't put a value in it, it's just going to choose the number one for you. A negative one is a reverse search. Let's say you want to start at the bottom of the list and work up. A two performs a binary search where the data has to be sorted in ascending order. And negative two performs that same binary search, but the data is sorted in descending order instead. Based on what I've shown you so far, do, would you ever have a reason to use HLOOKUP or VLOOKUP again, especially if you have a license to the newer Microsoft Excel products? Based on what I've told you, I'm never going to go back. I have the newer version. So let's take it for a spin and see what it'll do. Okay. What you see here is the government data on inflation since 1913. So with this data, it comes in rows and columns, months across the top and years across the left hand side. So if I want to do a normal lookup, I can then go put a, a drop down list for years as I did in S2 and a drop down list for months that go across the top in S3. Now, if I wanted to look up the yearly average for a particular year, I would simply put my cursor in there and then I would then go up to the um, formula bar and put equals X lookup, open paren and identify the, the value that I want to look up, S2. The next parameter though is different. The next parameter I'm identifying the where I'm going to find that lookup value in my table of data. So I'm going to look at the years that are across the left hand side. The next parameter then is also different. I'm going to specifically identify what column of data I'm going to want to return, not by a column number, but I'm going to specifically identify it as row and column. And then my next value, of course, is an additional one where I can get rid of that pound NA and give a real English version. Now I can choose exact match for this demo. I'm just going to not choose my match. I'm just going to leave it at default and I'm going to leave the search mode at default and close paren there. When I hit enter, uh, my value for 1921 average is 17.9. If I go to 1925 and look at that average, let's go down to 1925 there and look over at the average. And yes, it is 17.5 there. So now I want to demonstrate the fact that I don't have to put data in any one place. Notice my year column is at the, is at the right. Your data isn't always laid out really pretty for you to use. And sometimes it gets really frustrating when you got to remake your data in order to get it to work for VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP or either one of those. So here I've chosen my lookup value. I've chosen my uh, value for where the data is found that is in my lookup value. And then I'm going to choose the average column again, just like I did before. And notice that it doesn't matter if the lookup value is found in one column and it's left or right or anywhere in relationship to the other one. It is just wherever it wants to be. And I put it and I highlight it there. So let's go back to our previous spreadsheet. Now, I want to show you how to do a two dimensional array. So I'm going to choose the rate based on the year and the month with simply embedding the XLOOKUP function together. So I start with the XLOOKUP in the open paren. First thing I'm going to do is identify my 1925 lookup value. Then I'm going to identify the column that has my years in it. And then I'm going to identify the return array, but the return array, I'm going to go and put in a new X lookup. 
and my XLOOKUP there is going to return values based on the column. And that, so I'm going to identify August. I'm going to identify the data. There's my where I'm going to find my lookup. And then the next thing, I was, I'm going to identify the entire array where I would find my columnar data and my row lookup data. I put my if found value in the second one. Yeah, value not found. And then I close that and hit enter. Now I have very easily done a two-dimensional array where I can choose any rate in the entire cube there, entire table there, um, based on a month or a year and the combination of both. And it's very simply done. All right, I hope you've gotten some good things out of this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Let's get it out to more people. Also, if you find value in the other videos that you're seeing at this channel, please hit that subscribe button and we'll look forward to seeing you later. Thanks.